If you are looking to build a stronger hip while improving your hip mobility, decreasing stiffness, and decreasing pain with hip osteoarthritis, this is the video for you. Many people believe that finding relief from osteoarthritis is only possible with surgery, more medications, and procedures. There is another option that can be incredibly powerful, and that is getting stronger. Building muscle to help support your arthritic hip can be one of the best ways to walk longer distances, sleep better at night, improve your mobility, be able to get in and out of the car, and more. In this video, I have put together my top five favorite strengthening exercises to help support an arthritic hip. We're going to start with the easiest exercise and then work our way up progressing in difficulty. Make sure you stay till the end so that way you can see what you are working up to. Let's get started. This first exercise involves a chair and a pillow. It can help to relieve inner thigh or groin pain, stiffness, and tightness, a common symptom of hip osteoarthritis. Sit towards the edge of your chair, bend your knees up to about a 90 degree angle or as close as you can get. Make sure both feet are on the floor. I'm gonna grab my pillow. You will want it to be a fluffier pillow. You don't want it to be a really thin or easily compressed pillow or else this exercise may be difficult. I'm gonna fold my pillow in half and place it between my knees. You may need to take your feet in a step, bring them in a little narrower. You're going to squeeze the pillow at about 50 or 60% effort. Hold for three to five seconds and then relax. This narrow stance comes in because as I squeeze, I wanna make sure my knees and ankles are in line. If my feet are too far apart, as I squeeze, my knees come in and my feet are outside. We don't want that to happen as that can cause some issues with putting pressure in certain aspects of the joint. Squeeze the pillow. Feel those inner thigh muscles contract and then relax. The idea here is we are contracting those muscles and then allowing them to relax, releasing that tension, releasing that stiffness. The goal here is to work up to 10 or 20 repetitions. Mastering this exercise and consistently doing it can help with lifting up your leg, getting in and out of the car, going up the stairs, and even walking. Doing this in the morning when you wake up and experience that stiffness or if you've been walking for a while during the day and feel some irritation in that area, this exercise can be a great one to keep in your toolbox. For this next exercise, you will need some space along a wall and a chair for support. We are moving to working the outside hip muscles, your glutes or your buttocks muscles. Working these muscles can also help to relieve front of the hip pain and or tightness, a common symptom of hip osteoarthritis that tends to stem from overworking these muscles and not working the outside hip muscles enough. Stand relatively close to a wall Maybe stand where your shoulder's touching it and then maybe a half step away. You're going to work the leg that's on the inside or the leg that's closest to the wall. Bend your heel up slightly and bring your knee to the wall. From here, you are going to press your knee into the wall and hold for three to five seconds and at about 50 to 60% effort. Again, it's not a squeeze as hard as you can. Come down. And repeat, you may need to adjust your foot position depending on what feels most comfortable to you. Bring that knee to the wall and press in. You do not need to press your heel into the wall. Just think about making contact with your knee. Don't lift your leg up in front of you. Try to keep it in line with your other leg. Press in. Now you should be feeling a couple of things during this. One, you will feel the outside hip muscles of the leg that's pressing into the wall activate. What's also important is you will feel the outside hip muscles on this other leg contract as well. Hold for that three to five seconds and then relax. We're aiming for eight to 10 repetitions on one side and then you will switch and do the same thing on the other side. This exercise can also be helpful in being able to put on socks and shoes getting into this figure four position, whether you're standing or sitting. I do have a video that talks more about getting into that position and helping improve that mobility that you can head to 
after this video is finished because we have three more exercises to go. This next exercise is going to challenge balance. Working on balance is incredibly important for relieving hip pain because it challenges your muscles that help to support the joint. For, of course, obvious reasons, it helps to prevent falls and prevent other complications down the road. Before we get started on this exercise, though, I want to make sure that you have the basics mastered first. You must be able to stand one foot slightly in front of the other without losing your balance, without having a lot of accessory motion. You can widen your stance if you need to. This will help to make this easier. Your goal is to be able to stand here for at least 10 to 15 seconds without needing to hold on to something for support. You will want to make sure you can do this on both sides. Once you're able to do that, then we can start adding movement. This particular balance exercise I'm about to show you also incorporates the core, brings in a little of the upper body, and turns those hip muscles up a notch. You can use a weight or a water bottle. I will show you both. I'll show you with a water bottle or a pillow or any sort of object you have around your house. You're going to hold it at both ends. Elbows are bent to about a 90 degree angle and close to your sides. Rotate one direction come back to the middle, and then rotate to the other. I like to call this the row the boat. Now notice I'm not twisting. I'm keeping my chest forward and bringing that object to each side. Adding movement to balance exercises makes them more difficult and helps to relate more to everyday life. Usually when you lose your balance, you're doing something or distracted by something or you're trying to move in a certain direction. You can then use a weight to make this more challenging. Do the same thing, but now you just have more resistance. Aim for about 20 passes. And so usually I count every pass as being in the middle. So it would be one, two, three, four, up to 20. Watch as I do this, I'm keeping the weight close to me. I'm not bringing it way out to the side. Keep it close, keep your chest forward, and remain balanced. Once you complete 20, you will switch the orientation of your feet and do the same thing. Only move up to a weight if you feel confident you can do this with another object. Using the weight can of course bring other risks as far as dropping the weight or sending you more off balance. This next exercise helps to work the backs of your legs, also known as your hamstrings, and your glutes or your buttocks muscles. These muscles are incredibly important in supporting the back or the posterior aspect of your hip joint. You can do this exercise with and without weights. I'm gonna show you first without weights so you can master the basics before adding weight. This is called a hip hinge or a deadlift. Stand with your feet about shoulder width apart. My favorite way to teach this is actually taking your fingers and placing them right on your hip bones. Relax your knees. So I always like to kind of shake them a little bit so they're relaxed and not locked out. From here, push your hips back. Notice my chest is staying up. I'm not looking down at the floor. Think about maybe looking three to five feet in front of you. Then use your glutes to stand up nice and tall. Try a couple here. Actually push your hips back. Notice my back is in a relatively straight line. I'm not bending at the shoulders or at the spine. Another variation I like to use is standing in front of a wall. You're essentially doing a similar movement, but now you're reaching for that wall, giving you some feedback. You should be able to complete about 10 to 15 of these without significant pain and with ease before you add weight to this. Also, when you add weight, you no longer are able to push your hips back. So you'll have to get used to now bending your hips without that actual tactile feedback. When you stand up, think about pushing your weight through your heels, activating the backs of your legs and your glutes to help you stand up. Once you feel comfortable with that, we can grab a set of weights 
I would err a little bit on the lighter side at first. And then once you get more confident, you can increase the weight. Weights stay in front of your thighs, keeping those weights next to my legs, sitting my hips back, squeezing my glutes, and standing up tall. I'll show you from the side. Sit your hips back as those weights ride down your legs and then squeeze up nice and tall. With weights, the repetitions are going to depend on how heavy the weights feel. Aiming for about eight to 10 repetitions can be a good place to start. And then you can go up in repetitions as the weight becomes lighter or you can decrease the repetitions as you go heavier. The idea is just to make sure it feels good to your joints and does not flare up pain. This last exercise is great because it not only works the leg muscles, it works the core and the upper body. You will need a chair that you'll feel comfortable standing up from, ideally without having to use your arms to stand up. So if you need to raise the height of the surface, that would be a great modification. This exercise can be done with and without weights. I will show you without weight first. Prepare like you're going to stand up. Slide your heels back slightly underneath you if you can. Knees are about hip width apart. Stand up, but as you stand up, press your arms overhead. Bring your arms down and sit down and repeat. You're focusing on keeping your chest up so you're not bending forwards before you stand up. Stand up and press overhead. You want to be able to easily complete about eight to 10 of these before adding weight. Of course, you do not want to experience knee pain or hip pain. So make sure that you feel confident with that before you start to add more weight. If you want to use weights for this exercise, this is how I would set up. Hold the weights up at your shoulders. This is of course why it's important to make sure you can stand up without having to push off. Stand up and then press overhead. Notice it's a fluid motion, that's the goal. Your goal is not to stand up and then press. As you're standing up, start to press overhead. This is helping to build power, being able to generate strength quickly. A key factor in stair climbing, in walking, especially on inclines. Aiming for eight to 10 repetitions, depending on how heavy the weight is, increase the repetitions. If the weight feels lighter, you can decrease the repetitions as the weight becomes heavier. Once the weight does become heavier, form is incredibly important. Making sure you don't alter how you're doing this. One common mistake I see is that people lean forward and move in almost a segmented standing position. If you're doing that, likely the weight is too heavy. You should be able to keep your gaze or your eyes forward, chest up, stand straight up, and press those weights overhead. Building that muscle power can be incredibly important for finding hip arthritis relief. But make sure you are working up to this by mastering the other four exercises first. In order to make true change to your muscle strength, you have to be consistent. Starting with these exercises every other day can be a great place to start for most. If you are looking for more targeted follow along routines that help to incorporate exercises just like this, as well as thousands of other exercises that help you to build strength in the right areas, feel more confident and improve your balance. Adventures for Life, my arthritis workout membership is a great next step. You can learn more about this membership by clicking the link down in the description below. You have so much potential and I'm here to help you unlock it.